gentlemen, welcome to America's Auto Enthusiast Program. This is Auto World. And now, here's your host, Bob Long. Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me here for another hour of Auto World. And what an exciting hour we've got lined up for you because we're going to be joined momentarily by one of our regular contributors and supporters of the program. It's Dan Watson, the gentleman with the great website called thelubepage.com. We encourage you, if you have any questions about finding the right oils for your car or truck, to dial us up at 855-660-4261. We are live, unlike many shows on the weekend. Patrick will answer the phone and take advantage of this opportunity, 855 855- Six six zero four two six one, or you can email me Bob at Auto World Radio, Bob at Bob Long Radio, or you can email Dan at the dot com. Dan is the man when it comes to Amsoil, one of the largest distributors in all of North America. A gentleman with more than twenty five years of lubrication specialist credentials, and a gentleman who worked in. Uh, the Navy in the nuclear propulsion program. Let's go to the Auto World guest lines and welcome Dan Watson back to Auto World. Dan, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, Bob. Uh, it's a great evening and glad to be on the radio. It certainly is. Let's uh, talk about the simple task of you would think, but not so in 2018, finding the right oil for your car or truck because in 2018 there are so many things you have to take into consideration. Well, that's correct, Bob. And, you know, we'd like to think so many things. We'd like them to be the old idea of one shoe fits all. That would sure make life easy. All I'd have to do is buy uh, the exact same size uh, glass or cup for everybody. Uh, get the same size car. Everybody could drive anything from a – we just all drive a little uh, Honda four-seater or something like that. But it doesn't work that way. There's always reasons that people need to tailor their car to their needs. The vehicles are made by different manufacturers, and they have different um, – shall we say, technological viewpoints on how they're going to manufacture that engine and what lubrication is going to be required. So we have to take our time and do what is really called in the financial world, we call it due diligence, and it means that you got to take some time and investigate and find out what's best for your vehicle. Now, you got a whole group of guys that have done this for you, and if you look in your owner's manual of your car, you're going to find a section there on lubrication for engine oil, transmission oil, gear oils, whatever is required for your car, your vehicle, your, your truck or car or motorcycle. And the point about this is is that that's really the best place to go and start. I mean, you shouldn't be exploring online or trying to find out many times from uh, even a guy like me on the radio of what oil you should use, it's right there in your owner's manual. The problem is people sometimes don't know how to read that. They don't know exactly what it means and how to verify that they have bought exactly what's called for in their owner's manual. So I think the first thing that we need to do to help people out this and educate them is to say, if you go into your owner's manual and you look and you see that it tells you what you're supposed to buy, can you recognize what it means and then transfer that to the auto parts store or the uh, hardware store or wherever you go and find the motor oil for your car? Or are you able to tell the uh, oil change place, the quick lube or tire store, wherever you're getting it done for you, are you able to request what it is that you want for your car to make sure that you get the right lubrication. So when you go into the owner's manual, it will tell you that uh, a certain uh, classification of oil 
and a weight or viscosity, and it'll have some temperature ranges where it says sometimes that if you're in this temperature range, you should use this weight or viscosity of oil. If you're in a different temperature range, you should use this. And sometimes it'll say there's one oil which is recommended for all temperature ranges, that you could use it in all temperature ranges if you didn't want to go to one of the specific ones that are designated for certain ranges. So what that means is if you live in um, Alberta, Canada, mm -hmm. you're going to have a different need for oil than if you live in Phoenix, Arizona, because in Alberta, beautiful place, one of the prettiest places on earth is Alberta, but it's going to get cold. And, mm -hmm. and it could be 25 below zero. And in Phoenix, another beautiful place, but in the summer, I, I just believe that might be the hottest place there is in the United States. <laughs> yeah, 115 <laughs> degrees in Phoenix, Arizona in the summer. So you got some really extreme conditions here. And so the manufacturer is going to tell you in those kinds of, because they sell cars to both places. They'll sell a, a Chevy or a Toyota in Phoenix, and they'll sell a Chevy or a Toyota in Edmonton, Alberta. So how do they tell you that you how to use what oil? Well, they're going to tell you they there is an oil. They'll tell you that you could use in in both places year round, and then they'll tell you well if if you want to, there's a different oil you could use in Phoenix. It'd be thicker, and there's a thinner oil you could use in uh, Edmonton because of the cold weather. So now, how do you know what they're talking about? Here we go. You look in there, and it says the classification, meaning what is stipulated as the service classification, what oil is actually up to maintaining your vehicle. And that means that they've, they've set a, they've uh, determined the number of testing parameters that this oil has to go through so that the manufacturer would accept that it's good enough to protect your car. And we look in there and we see things, uh, you go back years, it would have started with SA. Well, it's now, this is for gasoline engines. It is now up to um, SN, okay, as the end in November. So SN mm -hmm. classified motor oil. And then you look and it says that you can use a 5W30 year round in any climate. But if you want to go to the temperature range thing and use something a little more uh, narrow-banded, then you can see that it says, well, if you're in um, Phoenix, Arizona, the temperature is going to be consistently above 100 degrees. Maybe it will say that you could use a 5W40. And if you look at it and you live in Edmonton, Alberta, and it says you're going to be in with a lot of weather below zero, says, well, you could use a 0W30 or a 0W20 in the winter. So you're starting to look at these things and say, okay, well, I live in uh, Arkansas. I don't live in either one of those places. And my book tells me for my car, my Chevy, that I can use a 5W30 year-round, and it must meet SN classification. All right, we're getting somewhere. We know now what to look for. So we go to the auto parts store. We've had this discussion before on the air, how to read the bottle. Mm -hmm. So we, we go in and we look, and there's oil sitting on the shelf. I pick it up, and it's got a service classification on it. Sometimes it can be in a what they call a little donut that shows the API donut, it's called, American Petroleum Institute. Other times it may not be in the donut. It may just be listed in the on the back for the classification of the oil. And so we'll come back after the break and read that bottle. Giving your radio a broadcasted tune-up. This is Auto World and your host, Bob Long. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. We're talking about choosing the right oil for your car or truck, and who better to do that than our certified lubrication specialist with more than 25 years of experience, Dan Watson. And, Dan, just before that uh, hard network break there, you were bringing up a point, so why don't you uh, reiterate it once again? You bet. We had reached the point having discovered what's in the owner's manual to go to get that oil from our local parts store and how to read the bottle 
and make sure that it matches up with what our owner's manual called for. And in the owner's manual, we're talking about a late model, like a 2017, let's say, and it was calling for a 5W30 SN classified or rated engine oil. So when we get to that auto parts store and we look on that bottle, <clears throat> we're going to see that it's going to have the API classification. That's that SN rating. And we're going to look on that bottle and see if it says 5W30, which will be the ASE viscosity. ASE is the American, is the, uh, let's see, ASE, yeah, Automobile Society uh, Engineers, okay, ASE. So we look at this and we say, okay, here's a bottle of you name it. This is Valvoline I'm looking at, and it says that it's SN certified and that it is a 5W30. So now the question is, uh, what does that uh, what does that mean to me now? I've got that all says it's good, but is it good? Is that the one I want to buy? How how do I make any decision based on these eight different brands of oil that are sitting on the shelf of what I want to put in my car? How do I can I make any kind of assessment beyond just seeing if it meets those minimum technical requirements of the uh, ASE and the API, the SN and the 5W30. Well, no, you really can't right there in the in the auto parts store. There's nothing you can do but look at that and say, well, these meets this. The only thing that you can do to start your own effort to determine the quality of these oils today is go to the Internet because there you can find different technical specifications on those oils to see what they really have in them and what they say that they're capable of doing. Now, some companies won't put much up on the Internet, and the reason is they really sell these oils like a commodity, which just means like going to buy a bucket of milk. If it's certified, that's good enough. You're getting it. They're all the same. What's the problem? Buy it because it's in a nice, pretty bottle, and it has a name on it that you recognize, and that's selling commodities. Now, when you look for selling performance or selling oil based upon whether it's doing a good job or not, now you start to see the companies working towards things they'll have like, well, you should buy this high mileage oil because if your car has over 70,000 miles on it, it needs more additives in the oil than it had at the beginning. My response to that is pretty simple. If your engine needed more protection, it needed it at mile two as well as mile 72,000, okay? And so you should have had the better added a package and quality oil in the engine from day one, not only after 70,000 miles. What you're admitting now is you didn't use the highest quality oil for the first 70,000 miles, so now you're going to put in the high mileage oil and hope that you can stop the deterioration and the wear and the and the um, gumming up of the engine that's taken place in the first 70,000 miles. So I just find that as a almost a uh, self-incriminating statement of you need to use high mileage oil because you used our regular oil for 70000 and it wasn't good enough to stop this, so now we're going to tell you to use something that's better so that it will try to fix the situation that we created with the substandard oil. So anyway, so the other question is when you look up on that shelf, you'll see that there are straight conventional oils, petroleum oils. You might find a blend which says that it is a – semi-synthetic or a blend of uh, synthetic and petroleum. And then you will see some oils that say that they are full synthetic engine oils. Then you'll see the ever rare case that you'll see, maybe there's names on the shelf, and it might say 100% synthetic, not just full synthetic. Mm -hmm. So you start to look at this, and you have to sort it out and deal with this. What in the world do I do with all this? This is worse than, than you know, trying to... Uh, figure out what kind of uh, diapers to buy for the baby. Is it Huggies, Pampers, or what, what do I get? You know, this is this is all, there's so much information here. Well, here's the thing I would tell you. Really today, if you have a late model car in particular, uh, you should be looking for the one that says synthetic. There's just no comparison. You're going to put it into a vehicle that probably has a relatively small engine that is all kind of, you know, hyped up to produce more power than 
than a 1980 V8, and it's nothing but a four-cylinder maybe with a turbo sitting on it. So you got to look at this and say, hey, I'm, I'm really driving a high-tech vehicle. It's in my best interest to put a matching lubricant in this car, something that will actually give me the edge on better lubrication because I'm really pushing this engine to higher power levels for this small uh, engine compared to what we would have ever gotten out of one of these, you know, 20, 30 years ago. This engine might be direct injected. A direct injected mm -hmm. engine is now a very powerful engine. It's using really diesel technology to directly inject gasoline into the cylinder rather than coming through the intake manifold. So does that affect the type of oil that I use? Yes, it does. Uh, you have to actually use a thicker oil with direct injected than you do with regular manifold injected type uh, operation because you may get some fuel dilution in your oil with direct injected, and that thins the oil, so you have to start a little thicker so that you have some insurance that it won't get too thin in the car and cause excessive wear. So you have to make a decision there looking at the shelf. And my advice is that you do some looking on the Internet. If you're going to stay with conventional petroleum oils, then you go look on the Internet and you, you can basically start to determine if you think the oil has got a really good reputation and if they're putting out a good product, even though it's petroleum. And then you make your decision because what you're mm -hmm. going to find is that some of the oils you'll see on the shelf today, you can't even find any information on the Internet, and they're pretty much fly-by-night, and you want to stay away from those. You stay away from them. If you see an oil there that says Valvoline, Castor Oil, Texaco, Havoline, Chevron, one of these, those guys make a product. They stand by the product. You have some confidence that it's not going to be substandard. Now, the same token – when you look at synthetics, there are some faux pas synthetics out there. And you, you just, if you buy them, you wasted your money because they're not any better than the petroleum that you could buy. But they're getting away with calling them synthetic. So what do you got to do? You got to move over to something you can trust. If you see Mobile One synthetic, you can trust Mobile One synthetic. If you see Castro synthetic, you can trust that. So uh, we can trust that I'll be back after the break to finish this discussion. <laughs> The king of the Segway, very good. Sam <laughs> Watson will be with us. You're not going to want to miss it. I'm Bob Ross. He rolled up on the right. He rolled down the window of his shiny new Jag. And challenged me then and there to a drag. I said, you're wrong, buddy. I'm just running fine. Hi, this is Jay Leno, and you're listening to Auto World with Bob Long. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here today on Auto World. Dan Watson, the man behind the website that everybody should check out. And it's just simply oil help, the loop page, sorry, the, uh, the loop page dot com. Our, uh, our good friend, uh, George, get in my head for a second. No, uh, that's quite all right. He's a good <laughs> the guy. .com, and you can actually post questions right there to Dan, Dan at the Uh Let's pick up on what you were saying before the break. Well, I was trying to emphasize that once you now have the right viscosity and classification of the oil that you're going to put in your vehicle, you have to now try to determine where you can verify some quality so you get something that is really good, not just a minimum specification. Recognizing that the API classification tries to be a one shoe fits all, and in doing so, it is the minimum standard. You can't go below that. Uh, and and qualify for the classification, but you can certainly go well above it. And so what you're looking for is to find those oil companies that will uh, go a step further and try to make a product that far exceeds what the minimum specification is. And we've talked on the show before about the need to look for special oils for European autos and how you got to be careful if you're driving classic cars because the oil has changed so much, you've got to get something that would meet those requirements from those years. 
and how obviously if you're driving a diesel that it uses a completely different oil than gasoline engine oils for the purpose of diesel engines. So there's different places. Your owner's manual is usually pretty good at keeping you in the right place if you use it in all those circumstances. Motorcycle oil is different than automotive oil. Marine engine oil is different than the other oils. There's differences in gear lubes and transmission fluids, all those things. That's why if you just take a minute and you say, well, why don't I just get a good recommendation for my car that I can live with and understand, that means you just go to the lube page, let me send you a complete recommendation for your vehicle on the right products to use. Uh, it's easy. It's going to be a uh, an all products recommendation page. I'll send it to you and you can then see exactly what's the best thing to use in your car. Now, synthetic versus petroleum, again, on the lube page, this whole article, and there's also uh, YouTube videos that you can access on the lube page that discuss this in much more detail than we can in a couple of minutes here on the radio show. But the point is, is that there is no comparison. There's not a lubrication engineer that works in the country that wouldn't tell you that a good quality synthetic engine oil is superior to any petroleum. You just can't make the petroleum oil of a level that it can compete with the synthetic engine oil. So that's just a, a bygone uh, argument or discussion. It's over. The synthetic wins hands down. Now, always the question is, well, what about expense? I mean, you got to pay a lot of money if you're going to buy that high-quality synthetic engine oil. Well, and and here's what I would say. That's why a company like uh, Angel Synthetics should get your attention because when you recommend running oil for longer drain intervals than you do with petroleum, for example, if a quart of petroleum is $4 a quart, which a good quality uh, Valvoline or Castor Oil or Quaker State, one of these guys, it's going to be $4 a quart. If I sell a synthetic engine oil for uh, $10 a quart, $11 a quart, $12 a quart, okay, that's three times as much as that petroleum oil. But the difference is, is that I'm going to tell you to run that engine oil up to five or six times as long as that petroleum oil. Now, none of us have to go back to the sixth grade and study our fractions up again to figure out how that works. It's pretty straightforward. If I run the oil three times as long, then it could cost three times as much, and I'm still not spending any more money. If I run it four times as long and it only costs three times as long, I'm saving money. If I go to five times, I'm really saving money. Well, there's more to it than that. I'm actually going to run this product for a longer drain interval, but at every testing parameter that I know how to test it, it's going to blow the doors off of competing with petroleum. So what have I got? I got a product that I can run for less money. It's more convenient because I don't have to mess with changing the oil as often. In fact, I could just do annual oil changes in most cases. And then on top of that, it protects my engine sometimes up to four times the protection level of regular petroleum. In the diesel oils that Ansel just introduced and what they call the max protection diesel oils, six times the protection provided by comparable petroleum. And that's using the Detroit diesel testing specifications. Not, not a test from Ansel, but their test. So you can buy high quality products and spend less money than if you buy the cheaper, less expensive products, and at the same time, enhance the life of your vehicle two to three times what you would expect it to last using this superior product. So I don't know how, Bob, you, I just don't know how you you make the argument uh, any different way other than the fact that greater convenience, greater protection for less money. I mean, it's hard to beat that. That is like, uh, wow, why doesn't everybody do this? I don't know. I don't know why people don't. Mobile certainly has moved in this direction. They now have their own version of an annual oil change oil. And what do we say at Anzal is thank you very much because imitation is the finest form of flattery. Okay. We're, we're glad to see that, that there are major people coming around going, boy, you guys figured this out a long time ago and you really made a, 
you made an art out of it. So we're going to try to bounce off of your many years of work and make another product. So it isn't something that it takes a brain surgeon to figure out or a rocket scientist, as they say. It's pretty straightforward. And a lot of this stuff in is laid out for you on the lubepage.com in both articles, magazine articles that I've written, and in uh, videos that have been done on the same topics. And you're going to be able to read, not read, but listen to a lot of the radio shows that you and I have done with the same information talked about. So it's a wealth of information to go there. And we always answer the questions that are put forth to us on that website. So you're going to get an answer, and you have absolutely nothing to lose and, uh, in some cases, a lot to gain. Now, that brings up another subject that I wanted to touch on. It's just me touching on this, kind of a pet peeve. But there are people that uh, come and, and they ask questions, and I always answer them regardless. And then we get further into discussion via email, and the person is really interested in in purchasing Amsoil Synthetics. Okay? So then the next time I talk to them, they say, yep, I – I ordered Amsoil, and I'm all set, and everything's good, and uh, this is really a great product. And my next question is, well, how did you buy it? I was hoping you might come through me since we had a discussion here, and I'm giving you free oil uh, consultant work, and I could really use your business. And their response is, well, what do you mean? I, I got the Amsoil. Isn't that, didn't that benefit you? And the answer is no. If you go straight to the Amsoil website, and decide that you're going to buy Amsoil, I don't know what dealer, where that you would be assigned to buy Amsoil because you just came in off the Internet. But I do know that if you go to the lubepage.com and from there you link over to the Amsoil website, to the Amsoil store, and buy something, that you'll take my information with you. And what I would ask the listeners, if you enjoy hearing the information on oils and lubrication, to remember me when you go to purchase Amazon, because that's what I'm in business for. When we come back on the other side, we'll give you more contact information from for Dan. And if you have a question, give us a call. Shoot us an email, Bob at AutoWorldRadio.com. The latter day muscle car. Uh, Anything is up for grabs here as we continue to help you understand what is the best oil for your car. Dan, it, it, you brought up right off the top the fact that so many people do not look at their owner's manual, and every now and then you hear these crazy stories where, you know, somebody rented a vehicle and didn't realize that they had to do the warranty charges the warranted work at specific intervals. So I know this woman who drove a, a, a three-year rental car for more than 30,000 miles without changing the oil. Oh, stories all the time. I've, I've had them where uh, the shop owner tells me that somebody came in and said they know it was time to change their oil because their, the red oil light was on on the dash. And he said, well, how long has it been on? They said, oh, a week or 10 days. But I figured that, you know, just now come on to change the oil, so I had a little time. And there uh, wasn't much left in the in the oil. Lucky the car was running. Uh, you know, you've got nothing but uh, almost tar and, and a little bit of liquid left in the oil pan, and you're getting ready to just lock up the engine. You're, you're on the short end of it. So, yeah, it's important that you actually – understand how to read the dash lights, what they mean, that you look in your owner's manual just like you would if you bought a new, I bet you if a person bought a new uh, type of uh, DVR or some type of recording device that they got for their, their TV or they bought one of these new smart TVs and all this kind of stuff, they would go in and look at these instructions and say, wow, look what I can do here and look what it does here. And boy, this thing, you can connect it to this, you can do this, and you can do that, because they'd be interested and they would want to know how to operate it. Well, when you get a new car, you really should spend the first week, 
two weeks, whatever, you know, at your leisure when you can, uh, reading through that owner's manual and look at the different things that it tells you on how to maintain your car. You know, it's got things on how to rotate the tires. It's got uh, every dash light that comes on an indicator, what they mean and what you should be concerned with. It's also got a maintenance schedule for when you should do oil changes, filter changes, cabin air filter changes, uh, grease the hinges on the – oil the hinges on the door, grease the chassis. It's got all that stuff in it. And so many times when you – See somebody and they're selling a car, and you ask the question, uh, you still got the owner's manual for it? And their answer is, yeah, I think it's in the glove compartment. I've never looked at it. And they've had the car for four or five years, and now they're selling it, and they've never looked at the owner's manual. So don't do that, folks. That's a big investment you're making in that car or that truck. And there's so much useful information in that owner's manual, and it's the first place that you start to find out the different kinds of lubricants, antifreeze. Antifreeze is so important in your car. More engines are destroyed by bad antifreeze than anything else because they rust through the water jacket on the engine and destroy the engine. So there's all kinds of stuff to look for. And I've heard, you know, automotive engineers that I've met say that if you really follow to the letter, the maintenance schedule that's in the vehicle, it lasts you probably 20 years and, and uh, half a million miles, you know. Mm-hmm. But when you ignore all that, it catches up with you sooner or later. And, uh, you know, it's like they say the, the squeaky hinge gets greased, right? But you shouldn't wait for things to squeak and to uh, scream out for lubrication. You should lubricate them up front and uh, keep everything operating and have a happy motoring time rather than be facing constant uh, breakdowns and repairs for lack of preventative maintenance that you can do on the vehicle. It's just not not a smart thing to do. And, again, I was saying before the break, folks, contact me. Give me a chance, especially if you hear any of this stuff and you're really interested in Amzol products, give me a chance to uh, make that sale to you, to be your – uh, servicing dealer because that's how I make my living. That's what gives me the ability to support this show and to be on the show and offer the free information. So I'm just telling you to give me a little support in the same way that maybe you support your local hardware store when they help you out and tell you which one of the fasteners or which is the right thing to use from hardware and you get that personal touch and say, hey, I'm going to support those guys because they give me personal advice and help me with repairs that I can't get at the big box store or one of those places. So we're going to offer you uh, consulting advice, application advice, and uh, the best information you can get and good service as a servicing dealer. So I just ask you to give us the first shot when you look at Amazon, and uh, you won't be sorry that you did. Very well said, Dan. And remind folks again about all the cool things they can find at thelubepage.com. Well, one of the things we have there is just numerous uh, videos that were made. They're YouTube videos. That's where they're still on YouTube, but there's direct access to them at the website. And they cover everything from uh, transmission fluid, gear oils, grease, motor oils, the difference between synthetic and petroleum, uh, they lawnmower oil, marine engine oil, motorcycle oils, all that in a video format where I'm discussing those products. <laughs> we also have a whole series of magazine articles that I've written on similar subjects. So if you're a person that likes to watch it on a video, you can see it in the video. If you like to read about it, you can read about it. And like I said, we're putting more of the conversations that you and I have, Bob, here on the radio there so that if you want to listen to it, you can listen to it. And then above and beyond that, all you have to do is go to Ask Dan a Question, and you can put in your own question. You could send something that's simple that says, Dan, I need to write applications for my 1976 uh, Chevy Chevelle, okay? I want to know what I should run in there. I don't know anything about it. Beautiful car. Bought it at an auction. I love it, but I don't know how to lubricate it, right? You're going to get a complete yeah. recommendation, okay? I've had people send me and ask me 
for their 1932 Roadster, okay? Uh, so I'll answer all those questions. I've had people send me, I have an experimental aircraft. What oil should I use? That's a whole different area. you got to be real careful there. But since he said experimental, I can talk to him, okay? <laughs> yeah. And then i got people, hey, I have an airboat with a 350 Chevy engine and a big prop on it. Uh, what's the best oil to run in my airboat, right? So we'll entertain any of those questions, and then you'll have information that nobody can take away from you, and you'll get uh, solid certified information, not just guesses. But I never guess. If I don't know the exact answer, I tell you that I'm going to research it and figure it out. But I will not send you an answer, as they say, off the seat of my pants because I'm too lazy to go research it and figure out what the right stuff is. I just won't do that. So you'll get good information, and I can always lead you to what's called the preferred customer lowest prices that you can get from AMSOIL. They're discount prices at the wholesale level, basically, on products that you can buy from AMSOIL. And by the way, they now have free shipping in that program if you buy $100 or more of products. So it, it's, it's just impossible to get a better deal. You get expert application advice. You get discount prices on the Amsoil synthetics that we recommend, and you get continuing access to this uh, as long as you want it, okay? So I'm selling myself as hard as I can here, Bob. You can tell, but the reason is is that, boy, the one thing that hurts me the worst is when somebody sends me an email and says they, they took my advice and they bought Amsoil, and they didn't come through me because that means I just sold oil for another guy in some part of the country who didn't do anything to help the customer make the decision. So uh, shall we say that one bugs me, so I'm trying to do the best I can to have people recognize that if they use me, don't abuse me. <laughs> Go ahead and, and get the information and then remember me if you decide to buy that product. I don't know if I've lost Bob. Are you there, Bob? Our telephone line, again, 855-660-4261 via the email, Bob, at com or Dan at theloopage.com. And, Dan, you continue to do a tremendous job in building up your web page and uh, getting the word out there about AMSOIL. How many years has AMSOIL been around? Since 1971. That would be... Wow. Going on 47 years. Amazing. Well, great job as usual. We thank you so much for your time here today. All right, Bob. We'll see you next time. Sounds good. Folks, this is Bob Long, host of Auto World Radio, with great news. We have a new sponsor, Dan Watson, who distributes AMSOIL throughout the USA and Canada. Dan is one of AMSOIL's largest distributors. He's a former U.S. Navy nuclear specialist and a certified lubrication specialist with 25-plus years of experience. You can listen to Dan every Sunday evening live at 6 p.m. Eastern Time here on GCNlive.com. Get all of your questions answered and ensure you get the best lubrication for your car, truck, boat, or really anything that moves. In 1972, Amsoil pioneered synthetic lubrication, and Amsoil continues to provide the best lubrication money can buy. Get the best advice for the best results. Contact Dan at thelubepage.com. That's thelubepage.com. Or call 800-370-2986. That's 800-370-2986.